Hello and welcome to Gardening at 58 North. So in this video I'm going to be starting a new bonsai. I might be making it into a kind of a penjing landscape eventually, but this is just the beginning of a new bonsai that I'm going to start with. And the bonsai I'm going for this time, it's going to be a willow bonsai. So the tray I'm going to be using is this one here. This is actually a, a cooking dish I got several years ago in a charity shop. I thought it looked quite nice. I'm not so bothered about the, the pattern on the inside because that will obviously be covered up with the, the soil once I planted it up. But it had nice patterns on the outside, so I thought this would make quite a nice bonsai tray or penjing tray, and it was much cheaper than buying an expensive terracotta bonsai pot. So this one, as I say, there's no drainage holes in the bottom because it is a cooking dish, so this would, should work quite well for things like willow, which doesn't mind water-soaked and saturated soil. So that's why I'm going to be doing a willow bonsai in this. I could use it for other bonsais, but I just have to be careful that I don't allow it to get waterlogged, as there's no holes for the water to drain out. So first of all, I'm going to fill it up with soil. So I'm actually going to use some garden soil for this. If I was to use compost, the problem is if it's going to be waterlogged a lot of the time, if you have a lot of organic matter and it's always waterlogged, it tends to get very acidic. Basically when organic matter is waterlogged, it goes through anaerobic digestion, you get really bad smells, you get a lot of methane gas produced, and it's generally not nice to have around the house. So I'm going to go for my, my, my garden soil, which isn't too high in organic content, but another thing that might work quite well is just pure sand, something that has no organic matter in. But bear in mind, if you do go for pure sand, you have to be quite careful with feeding, and sand doesn't have any of the nutrients that the plant needs to survive, so you have to make sure you add that with fertilizer. So I'm just going to start, I'm just going to fill this in. What I'm also going to do is so I can see how much water there is, because although willows are tolerant of waterlogged soil, they don't like it very waterlogged. So for example, they don't like the water right up to the base of their stem constantly. They can handle it periodically, but they don't want to be sitting in water. They can survive it as I say, but they're actually at their happiest in damp soil that isn't completely waterlogged. So what I'll do is I'll have a bit of a pond feature. That'll let me see where the water level is. It'll also let me top up the water more easily without washing the soil away. And I can just keep an eye on when it needs watering. So all I've done is I've got a wide necked bottle lid here. I've cut it off the bottle. I'm just going to situate it like this. Fill it around with soil around it, and that way I'll be able to see what's happening with the water down below. So I'll just go ahead now, fill this up with soil. What I might do in the future is make a more naturalistic, nicer looking pond that looks a bit more natural is, instead of just this like kind of circular one, which looks more like a well or a man made thing. But this is what I'll go with for now, and I can always tweak it later on. So that's the tray now filled up with soil. If you were to do this with a plant that doesn't like waterlogged soil, but you still wanted to have this kind of system so you can see how much water is in there, and also have it as a self-watering pot, what you can do is have a substantially deeper tray than this one, fill the bottom with gravel, and the bottom section can be saturated with water. Just don't let the, the soil get saturated, and the plants will just suck up and use as much water as they need. For this method, I'm using willow, so it doesn't matter if it gets too wet, so that's why I'm just having uh, pure soil for the whole lot, and I'm not doing a sand or gravel base to the, uh, the bottom of this planter. So as I say, I picked willow because it does well in saturated soil, and another reason I quite like to use willow is it's so easy to propagate. So I've got lots of willows in my parents' house, and all I need to do is cut off some of the branches. Here's one, for example. This has to be done in winter, though. You can't really do this in summer. They don't take root well if you do it in summer. You just need to take off a branch, cut it a piece, off it can be as small as probably a few centimeters or a couple of inches or it can as be as big as actually as three or four meters obviously for this case we're not going to be doing a three or four meter branch but you can have quite a variable size and it'll take no problem so all I'm going to do is take this this stem that I've got I'm just going to cut it into a couple of sections here it doesn't matter too much where you cut it along the base just bearing in mind the roots tend to grow on the lowest section so normally if you were to stick this upright they would grow around the base where you cut it I'm going to be putting these horizontal because I don't want these to be part of the final design for the plant so I'm just going to cut a couple of these And now I've got my cuttings, I'll just pay attention to the orientation. Now, this makes a big difference when it's growing in the soil vertically. It doesn't make such a big difference if you put it horizontally like I'm doing. But generally the buds that are towards the top of the shoot here are more likely to grow than the ones at the bottom. And you can tell what's the top because you have these little buds and this section here. These are the buds that are going to grow and they tend to, po they tend to be like little arrows pointing upwards. If you have them like this, they're pointing down, you know you've got the stick upside down. So all I'm going to do, because I'm putting this on its side, is rotate it round, see which one's near the top 
of that and situate that upright. When it comes to cuttings, the section at the highest point is the most likely to sprout and start growing and the section at the lowest point is the most likely to take root. So you can see here, I'll have that one there and this one as well is at the top. I'll have it like that. If I had it like this, this one is more likely to grow but it's towards the bottom so it's better to have this one instead at the top. So all I'm going to do it's just create a little bit of space in the compost and I just need to think about how I want these to grow so I'm just going to uh, create a little bit of space here just a bit of a trench. I'm going to bury them right down at the bottom so that none of the stem is visible and I think I'm just going to orientate them so that the growth when it comes up will be more of a in more of a central location so I'm just going to pop this one down here and this one again making sure that the shoot is on the top I'm just going to pop that down there right at the bottom and then completely bury them in soil and I'm going to keep this in quite a cool location willow cuttings tend to root a little bit better if you keep them quite cold if you warm them up too much what tends to happen is the leaves start to grow before the roots grow and that way they dry out and they don't really establish as well it'll probably still work but the leaves grow first the plant will dry out a little bit and it'll just take a while until the roots catch up but if you keep it quite cold, the roots will grow first and then it's got a good established root system and then once the shoots appear, there's plenty of roots to support them. So I'll be putting this in my conservatory. Temperatures there at the moment are between 8 and 15 degrees Celsius. That's a pretty good temperature to be at. If it's hard frost, then they're not going to grow. The ear is fully frost hardy, so it's not a problem having it in a frosty location. But just bearing in mind, it's just going to sit there dormant. And if it's above 20 degrees Celsius, you're just going to have a lot of leaf growth and you might not get a good rooting. So I'm going to leave this now for a few weeks until I see any kind of growth. I'm also going to water it. And the nice thing with having this little pond is I can use it as a watering hole. So I'm just going to pour the water in there. It will just seep out into the soil. Make sure the soil is nice and wet. And as I said before, I can keep an eye on how much water is in there. So you'll be able to see as I fill it up, the water will go up to the, the top. But then it will quickly soak away as the soil takes it in. And I'll just keep doing that until there's a very thin layer of water on the bottom. And it's not too high up the top. I don't want the whole thing saturated to say. I just want a really nice damp compost. So I just keep topping it up, making sure there's just a tiny bit of water within the bottom there. And that way I know it's the perfect amount. So I'll come back to you guys in a few weeks time. What will happen is we'll have a good rooting hopefully and a couple of shoots come up. I'm not sure if I'll keep both of these or just have one. I might do a grafting, experimental graft with it potentially where it kind of the two meet together and become one tree. This is what I'll start it as for now. But I'll see you in a few weeks time when it starts to sprout. So as you can see from that time lapse, I actually decided to change my plans a little bit. I decided to go with four plants inside this bonsai with the idea that I'm going to graft them all into the one tree eventually. So it's going to come up, they're going to kind of curve over and it's going to be like almost like it's got four trunks or four roots and then it joins in the middle and then I'll train the top half as a small bonsai tree. So you could probably tell from the time lapse that there was a few issues and what that was is there was a slug that kept going around eating off some of the shoots and there was also quite a bad infestation of aphids. I treated the aphids with some isopropyl alcohol but it was quite strong and it burnt some of the foliage so on some of these shoots what's happened is it's died off so you can see this one here it's kind of died off and hasn't grown anymore so it sent up a, a new one from here remembering that the the cuttings are actually horizontal sticks so there's a few dormant shoots and the same happened with the plants like this one on the right it had grown up originally you can see the shoot there the tip of it died off and so it sent up two side shoots so what i need to do is i need to do a bit of pruning on ones like this so this one for example i don't want two shoots i just want the one so i'm just going to cut it off the side shoot at the side here that way we just got the one shoot and then the same again with this one I only really want one shoot so I'm just going to cut off this weaker one here and the one at the back did die off and reshoot but it's actually growing uh, pretty much exactly in, in a straight line so that one's fine so what I need to do is make sure these are similar size for when it comes to grafting them together the grafting I'll probably do in a separate video um, but this one as you can see is really taken off doing really well growing very quickly now and this will soon be much bigger than the rest of the plants it will get its roots more established and it will dwarf the height of these and I have to keep them in check because the, the roots will be soaking up so much of the nutrients and water and it will actually start to shade them soon as well so 
what I need to do is give this one a hard prune down to about this level. The side shoot will come out, hopefully because it's quite a vigorous plant it will catch up with these three and then once they're a reasonable size and about this, a similar size as well then I can graft them together in the next video. So I'm just going to cut this off round about this height here and then that should send up a new shoot. I'm just going to make sure I clean that cut off to a bud. As you can see I need to sharpen these second tiers. I've cut it right above a bud so hopefully this one on the right hand side is the highest bud will grow and it will go towards the right which is where I'm going to train the branches in eventually. But it doesn't matter too much, they're very flexible, they are willow. What I'm going to do next to say is try and graft them together, that will be in the next video. And um, one other thing to add is I've got loads of moss starting to grow in the soil here. So you can see it there, it kind of starts looking like algae when moss is very young and it's grown from spores. Basically this is soil from my garden so there's a lot of spores from the moss outside. It grows like an algae mat and then from that algae mat, it's not actually algae but it looks like it, it the actual moss starts to grow. So that's what's happening here. You can see a few bit, bits of moss just starting to appear but it's mostly at the kind of like the algae looking stage. So it's gone green, but this whole thing will become moss within a few weeks. So that's just something to add. There's something that will probably happen to this. Um, I could try and get rid of all the moss, but it'll be quite difficult. So I'm just going to let it grow. It'll just look like a nice lawn. And so the next time you see this, it'll probably be a lot greener. And I'll probably put this outside soon. I've been having it in my conservatory, which is fine for now because it's spring. But once it gets warmer, it's going to be too hot for these plants. These are temperate plants. The widow likes it quite cool, doesn't like temperatures over 30 degrees, and that might happen in the in the sunnier days in the conservatory. So I'll be putting this outside, so there might be a bit of a change to the way these grow. We'll see how they do. This should do fine. If you do get a lot of rain, I might just have to make sure that the water doesn't come up right to the edge and start to, to waterlog it too much. But as I say, with being willow, a little bit of waterlogging isn't a big issue. So that's all for now. I'll see you guys in a few months' time when it's time to graft these together.